Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. I am super, super excited about what we're going to be creating today. So last time we did a video on yeah how to you know manipulate your reflective backdrop, how to add reflective backdrop to your image that you shot on, you know, maybe like a plain background like this. And the video was really, really amazing. The feedback was amazing. And today we decided to take it a notch higher right to place another image on a reflective backdrop to tell you that the limitations you have as a photographer is just your mind trust me it's just your mind if you can picture it if you can see it you can get it done so this is the background we are going to be using let me show you yeah this is it this is the background we're going to be using and this is the image we are going to be placing over there i am really really excited about the result that we're going to have because it's going to be really really mind-blowing so without wasting much of your time let's quickly get started yes of course you know the first step we need to take is to separate the object from the background and in that separation we are not using layer masking we are just cu cutting the object out while retaining the backdrop i believe by now if you have been following us you know why it's just simply to make sure that our details are perfectly retained so to our shadows rather are perfectly retained so to do that i'm going to make a selection of my subject and once the selection is made i'm going to right click and go to select inverse right i'm going to minus the earring so just go around your own image and make sure your selection is done rightly now if you notice i have a lot of headroom i already cropped the image out before the video so you might also want to crop out your image because you wouldn't want to be losing all this beautiful backdrop at the end of the day because if you don't crop out you may need to scale in a lot and in scaling in a lot you are going to be losing out you know all the beautiful things happening in your image so i'm going to make a duplicate then right click and go to layer via cut so now at this point if you have a rough background because i do not have but if you have a rough background you might want to reload the selection by holding your control and clicking right inside the box of the background then go to your filter go to blur go to Gaussian blur then smooth it out look at this one at 182 it's already smoothened out everything and we are losing our shadows so i wouldn't want to smooth it out but if you have a very busy background that you know have a lot of torn uh, a lot of foldings and all of that you might want to smoothen it out to get a very even background then make sure that your object layer is above and your background layer is below once that is done unlock the layer so you can move it around or just duplicate it pick up your move to drag it all the way in place it over your object now let's begin now we'll have our background placed over our object but we'll still have a lot of it you know not in frame and we want all of it in frame so we we'll just keep it somewhere around here as much as we can retain sure okay so we'll keep it here if you look at the lines you'll notice that you know turning it's bending towards the right so we need to give it a little space and align it properly beautiful so press enter we have it here now the make the next thing we need to do is to make sure that our background our shadows are properly represented but before we do that we need to match the lightening of the whole stuff so that we we'll get a uniform uh effect at the end of the day so how do we do that we we'll create a black and white adjustment layer the moment you create it you notice that the object is slightly underexposed more than the background although the mid-tones are matching so all we need to do is just to create a curves adjustment layer clip the curves to the object and just add a little dab do not make it too much then remove the black and white so you now see a better blending and lightening so we have equal luminosity now let's restore our shadows how do we restore our shadows you can decide to create a new one you can decide to bring back the old one and that's why we retain this background so let's look at how we can use this background to re to uh more like restore our shadows because normally we are supposed to change the blend mode of this background to overlay the moment we'll do that we get the back the shadows back let me show you normal look at that the moment you switch the overlay you get it back and that is the beauty of working with a gray background listen to me very photographer right 
and you love manipulations a lot there are three backgrounds you should never play with in fact you can have just these three backgrounds in your studio and you can create any form of magic you want to create in photoshop without having a lot of work to do you must have your gray background you must have your white background and you, ha you must have your black background these three backgrounds each time you shoot with them and you try to change the background, it does not leave color residues on the edges of your object. Although the white might add at some point, if you light it, if you brighten, or uh, let's say if you littered your background so much, it might spill lightning on the object. And because of that, you start having, you know, very mukish, whitish kind of stuff at the edge of your skin. So any background you are going to be manipulating, you must make sure it's towards a very bright color background if possible another white background that have a lot of textures and designs on it if not you will have a lot of work to do right it's not that it's not possible but you will have a lot of work to do but my one go background is gray it never goes wrong you can change it to anything let me show you the moment you you know cut it out you can change it to practically anything look at it the moment you just dropped it it blended if you change the blend mode to overlay, it still blends. Anything you do here will just look okay. Look at that. Anything you do we just look okay. Let's just put it somewhere it can allow the object standard. Look at that. Anything you do we just look okay. It never goes wrong. Oh, this is so beautiful. I love this gold. Beautiful. I'm going to retain this and use it in this particular image. Okay, so talking about the background. So make sure that you always use your gray backdrop. If you want to create magic, use your gray backdrop. Take it to Photoshop. Place any background on it. It will always come out right. But if you shoot on red, on green, on blue, ah, man, you have work to do. Of course, like I said, it's not that it's not possible, but you have a lot of work to do. So let's get back to the video. I will restore back my background here. Then I will create a curves adjustment layer here because I noticed it's a bit darker now. So we'll just brighten it up a little bit, add a little contrast to it, and we are good to go. So this background, this color I loaded here, I'm going to open it up. My God. So you see why I had to load the color when I saw it because it just brings you know that beautiful golden effect but of course we can't leave it like this we can even change the blend mode to color you have to make it lighter and bring it down a little bit of course we use it to color grade this image just hang on a bit now looking at this i'm noticing that the background is all bright and it's taking away attention from my object so i'm going to create a rectangular marquee tool over here right and just darken it down just the back a little that's all just like that so that we'll have our object to be the main focus it's very important now if you feel your shadows are not entirely represented you can come here and use your brush to restore them back okay i think that needs to be worked on manually so we we'll have to drag this over here and uh change the blend mode to multiply or any other blend mode okay valet does the job creates a mask for it pick up your brush and uh, just paint it in only the shadows please i don't want that just the shadows good so do we have the shadows any other place nah that works okay so we have our shadows properly restored to the image now looking at the image she's standing out the background is standing out it's looking fine but it's not blending so what do we do what do we do what do we do? this actually looks better what do we do so all we need to do is just to reduce this right make a duplicate then drop this over the whole image change the blend mode to overlay so it allows us to get a very beautiful blending then reduce the opacity so it gives you it gives us this kind of global color gradient effect on the image so the next thing to do is to, is to create an intentional you know global color grading so let's look for something that will give us high key contrast but maintain really really beautiful aesthetics i think i love this i love this i love this i love this the before the after amazing 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 okay so let's do one more thing go to your gradient mapping change the blend mode to soft light very important 
then go right in here all the way down to solid noise make sure your right your roughness is 35 so with this thing now you can be able to randomly change the colors and see the way it handles the color grading of your image another thing you can do is to even you know i love that i love that this looks really beautiful i wanted to tell you that you can even inform the way it handles the color you can change just a few things around here to get it you know very close to what you would prefer something like that press ok so this is the before this is the after of course is way too much you need to bring it down so this is also giving me the temptation to you know bring my attention to the image than the background yeah of course what we did here really worked did we brighten that up or darken it down what happened here i think this wouldn't work we need to remove this okay yeah this works better this is better so the next thing to do is i'm going to go into my camera raw filter over my background here and uh, create a vignette effect for it. Good, this is beautiful. But it's too much, so I'm going to make a duplicate. Very important. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> All right, so this is getting really, really interesting. You know, I didn't envision this. You see why it does have to. You know think outside do your thing i actually didn't envision this look at that texture bro i didn't envision that if you make a duplicate of the same background two times it's going to even you know give you more textures and i love the textures the way the lightnings are flowing and oh this is beautiful of course we'll bring it down look at something else I'm, i want to try yeah so make a duplicate drag it all the way to the top because if you look at this image now you're going to notice that she doesn't have you know the reflection of that background on her body so if you bring it all the way to the top right see what it's going to do it's going to give a very high key lightning but of course we can drop it down and we get very interesting highlight it's cool bro this is so beautiful yeah, what do we have here? Too much. Too much, too much. So create a mask. Remove it from the top. I think it's from the, the top is really, really unnecessarily dark. Just reduce it. I want that effect on the down part only. Yeah, okay, so we'll have it there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So to crown the whole thing, I'm going to create you know just a very little illusion in the in the middle we can make the middle very bright just a very a very little illusion so i always love doing this it allows me retain attention on my image especially when i'm working with this level of symmetry so i need to make sure that the circles are directly matching yeah directly on that there on her curves and all of that so we just make it dab like this and immediately she grabs the attention right so we can just do ctrl i and we'll have that center really really bright to draw attention or you can as well do ctrl i and you have that center really really bright really really dark to also draw attention but i think i prefer it bright i prefer it bright it looks really better bright so we just have to soften it out a little now nah, lost the attention let's leave it hard you know somewhere around here and we are good to go so let's look at the overall before and after so this was the image when we got started this is the after this is the before this is the after try it out on your own image of course this background you are getting it for free i cannot not give you this background for free so all you need to do is to make sure you join our telegram community and you will gain access to it this is really really beautiful i'm excited about the result last thing before we go so if she's standing on a reflective surface ah how did i forget that if she's standing on a reflective surface we need to see her reflection right yeah so we need to create her reflection how do we do that go to her object layer press ctrl j 
uh, go to the one under so that it just automatically hides for you. Press Ctrl T, right click, flip vertically. Then you can just drag it down like this. Beautiful, like that. So you can use your skew, right click, go to uh, skew. I think that's how it works. I've not used this for a long time here. Yeah. Bring it in here, bring it in here. Beautiful. So it allows you to drag the edges in like this, like this. Press OK. So now we'll have her reflection on the floor, but it of course cannot appear like that. It has to look, you know, see the way this one is looking. So we just have to blend it in to what we have on the floor already. So we can go to, let's look for a very good blend mode that will do the job for us. This is not very strong. So what does overlay do? Let's see how overlay handles. Okay, so we need to reduce the saturation. Yeah. And this can be at zero. We need to reduce it. Okay, beautiful. Then blow it out a little bit. So let's see if we can get a a filter gallery that will allow us to create that kind of zigzag effect on it. So we should be looking at a sketch or brush strokes. Okay, I'm looking for, there's a particular one I'm looking for that allows you to create, yeah, that effect that looks like water water zigzags and all of that this works this works ocean ripple what does that do this works press ok ok so yes so we need to drop that down good yeah we have our reflection down there and this is the final step so this is our before this is our after this is our before this is our after so join our telegram community make sure you join it to get this background thank you so much for watching subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video until then see you